estimated that uh, even at the time of Rashi, uh, Rashi uh, was born in 1035. So even at the time of Rashi, there were only uh, five or 10,000 Ashkenazim in the world, where there were uh, probably a million Sfarim. The situation reversed itself uh, later on in the, the end of the Middle Ages. But amongst the kilos of Ashkenaz, there were different uh, sources that founded the kilo. So, uh, for instance, uh, in Mainz and uh, in Spires and in Worms and the Rhineland. Uh, the uh, Kehila was founded by Rabbeinu Gershon Moragola, who was originally one of the Gonin from Bovel. And somehow from Bovel, he got to the German Rhineland. I didn't hear you. That's the Ashkenazi Iraqis, yes. <laughs> And uh, uh, <clears throat> Rashi uh, studied in the yeshiva of the students of Rabbi Nagershon. Rabbi Menachem and Rabbi Yehuda, Rashi's rabbis, all were the students of Rabbi Nagershon. In Bovel itself, at that time, there arose a uh, custom, a humrah, based upon what was happening there. And what was happening there was that the people who sold grain uh, began to mix grain. In other words, if you wanted to buy 100% uh, wheat, uh, it was almost impossible to buy 100% wheat. So you bought 90% wheat and 10% was, I mean, today we call that filler. You know, to, you know, to hold the fiber together. It also uh, enabled the producers to make more money because the filler was cheaper than the wheat. There also arose economic crises. People didn't have money. I mean, people didn't have money. People didn't have grain. So we find that in the 10th and 11th centuries, the people made bread, not out of the five types of grain, but they made bread out of corn, for instance. In the United States, even till today, corn bread is famous. And then people made it out of peas or out of beans, out of types of legumes that you could turn into a type of a flour that became uh, accessible to bake bread with. So that was the origin of what we call kitniot. And therefore, uh, the, a custom arose, now by the, by the dinim of Chomets and Matzah, uh, the Jewish people added layers upon layers to it. To be very, uh, and these are from the Easter comics. The Mr. Chorus, it's the, uh, like the beginning Easter in the Torah, so to speak. So they were very careful about it. So since there was a period of time when it was widespread that uh, 
bread that was made from corn or bread that was made from beans or from other types of legumes was mixed with wheat also. So on Pesach, it was a shail of chometz because of the little bit of wheat that was mixed. And on Pesach itself, there's no din of bitu. There's no din of uh, the majority being something else. And therefore, the meaning arose not to use legumes, bread made from legumes, matzah made from legumes. From there, the minig expanded so that by the 12th century, the Ashkenazim did not use legumes at all. Not only matzah made from legumes, but legumes at all. And that became the Xera of Kidneys. And that was a uh, minute that was established among Yehuda Ashkenaz. And it was and is a very strong minute. So much so that uh, even in times of dire circumstances, uh, the minute has not been allowed to be waived or compromised. For instance, we have many uh, uh, instances in the Chuvas in the First World War when the uh, communities of uh, Eastern European Jewry were ravaged, uh, almost destroyed by uh, the effects of the German-Russian War. So there was no good. <laughs> There was no uh, grain. It was like what's going on in Ukraine today. So there was a movement to allow kidneys on Pesach. Because people didn't have what to eat. So let them eat the beans. The corn. But the Rabotin refused to... Uh, Sanctioned that. The cook has a shiva on it. Here in Eretz soil, there was also, there was nothing to eat. So we find it hard, Baruch Hashem, to uh, imagine nothing to eat. You know, in America for two, three months, there were the uh, shelves and the supermarkets were not filled to overflowing because of problems they had with the supply chain, with unloading ships, et cetera. So the world came to an end. You couldn't get your favorite peanut butter. But uh, throughout history, uh, there were tragically uh, times that we're talking about much more serious problems. So that was the shine of kidneys. Now we are making in kidneys uh, in many respects that we are not making in comets. For instance, uh, milk that we have for Pesach. So uh, the cows do not eat chomets because the milk is a product of chomets. <coughs> so uh, the uh, few months before Pesach already, they changed the feed of the cows. The cows eat kidneys. They don't eat Chomets. And they eat a lot of citrus. People who are sensitive 
claim that they can taste the difference between Pesa Diga milk and ordinary milk the rest of the year. You can certainly tell the difference in the price. <laughs> but they changed the, price, the uh, feed and there we allow kidneys for the cow to eat. And we don't say that it has a din of comments. What's the connection? Meaning the cow eat one month before Pesach, she eat comments. What's the connection you have here? Because then the food comes through the comments. The milk comes through the food it eats. When she eats it, it's not comments. It's the very uh, uh, thoroughly discussed in Allah about milk there. That's why, for instance, again, amongst the Gila's Ashkenaz, until really 50, 60 years ago, nobody ever had milk fix on Pesach. I remember when I grew up, you know, that we had meat and potatoes for breakfast. And so the meat, if the, the, she eats the chametz and uh, so, slaughter. So the difference is, that the meat is slaughtered before Pesach. Okay, There's no see. meat on Pesach. No. So the meat before Pesach is bottled, but the cows are milked every day. So, but it means that if you take head from a cow before Pesach. Yeah, it's fine. It's so you see on the bottle, the, the carton, it says, kosher le'erif Pesach. What are they saying? They're saying that's bottled. That's what they're saying. John Arapes, there's no problem. I'm Pesach itself, it's Pesach milk. So they never had, uh, they never had milk. That's before the hotels uh, figured out how to make money on Pesach. <laughs> so that was kidneys. So then the question was, Shem and Hayotze mina kidneys. What about oil or a secondary product that is made from kidneys? Like for instance, corn syrup is used to sweeten things instead of sugar. So if it's sweetened with corn syrup, is that included in kidneys or not? Al it is not kidneys, but al piminig it is kidneys. So, for instance, Coca Cola, which is kosher la pesa, is they don't use corn syrup to sweeten. They use sugar. Now, then you had a question what falls under kidneys? Is sugar kidneys? What, what, what is the measure of it? So, we had Shilas now, or quinoa, and other things that look like grain, but they're not grain. Even amongst the Svartim, there's a difference regarding rice. There are certain kehillists that do not use rice because the Ritva brings in his chuvas that in his kehillah they found that they mixed the rice with, with wheat. So therefore they didn't use rice in other Svartic illness, rice is a staple on Pesach. And because of this, there became another custom that we didn't eat by one another on Pesach. Because maybe you held kidneys and I don't hold kidneys. Maybe you hold rice, I don't hold rice. So there became that custom too, which is in a family can be very destructive. So there's an entire literature regarding these minhagim. So I'm sure that Rabbi Kennigsberg will take us through many of them. And we'll talk about a few others yet before Pesach uh, so that we have an understanding of what is happening and why it's happening and when it occurred. Rabbi Hanan Yemen Akash, Rabbi Ratsa Kari Barchu, Zakot, Es Yisrael, Shkotil Chachir Balahem Torah Mitzvah, Shen Emar, Aranoich Abhev Saman Tzidkau, 
יגדיל תורה ויד עיר.